Hello everyone, welcome to a Boca Chica terrain update, hopefully in time for upcoming events. What we have here is not only the terrain, but now also Pekka's scenery for Starbase and the production facility up the road. And if you have the location of the KSC placed at Brownsville, uh, which you can do in the tracking station with real solar system and KSC switcher, then the actual KSC, the stock KSC will be placed like this and most of it's underground, but that's fine. You probably shouldn't be using it and we don't want it to poke out too much compared to the other facilities. And you can use the icons over here to access the stuff. So again, if you want to go, to, you don't have to actually place the KSC at Brownsville to use this stuff. You will need Kerbal Constructs and you'll be using the Kerbal Constructs uh, spawn points in order to access the stuff. So even if you're at Cape Canaveral, in the KK icon, you will be able to select your launch site. Now, if you already have universal spawn points in your Kerbal Constructs folder, make sure that when you download the mod, instead of just copying everything over and overwriting everything, that uh, for the Kerbal Constructs folder stuff, that you take the universal spawn point instances and you actually open that configuration file and open the one that you already have in Kerbal Constructs and copy those things over. Uh, most people probably will not have an existing file in their Kerbal Constructs, uh, but if you do, uh, just go into Kerbal Constructs, go into New Instances, and then in New Instances, there's a Universal Spawn Point instance, uh, Instances.cfg, and then you'll need to make sure to copy those instances over, merge the two files instead of uh, just overwriting it, otherwise you'll lose your existing instances. A lot of things will have the spawn points go with them instead of putting them in the Kerbal Constructs folder, but I've had some trouble with that, so that's why I didn't do that. It's complicated, sorry about that, but anyway, the universal spawn point instances are the ones that get listed here, and you will have the Boca Chica orbital launch, suborbital launch A, and suborbital sub launch B. Oh, a little bit of typo there, sorry about that. But those are produced by P.E.K.K.A. and the scenery there is produced by P.E.K.K.A. However, you no longer have to worry about it being misplaced. It's built into the terrain now. So that is the big update. The fact that the terrain has the scenery built in. Now sometimes with Kerbal Constructs, it'll dump you at the KSC launch pad instead of the place that you picked if you haven't specifically gone back and selected it again, so I'm going to do the little dance between the two and make sure it knows that I want the Boca Chica orbital launch. And so this is uh, Pekka's Starship and Super Heavy, but of course the terrain is compatible with any rocket you care to place at it. It doesn't matter which one you use. However, I'll put the link to Pekka's GitHub. Uh, Pekka's uh, GitHub might ha not have the most updated version of the Starship Super Heavy yet. Hopefully it'll be updated soon. Uh, the mod also has Pekka's Falcon 9, and so yeah, uh, but here we have the current version of the Starship Super Heavy and Orbital Launch Mountains uh, structure, and we will bring this out to the launch pad, and I'm going to try out my KOS script with it in this version. Okay, so here we are, and I forget if this is the right placement for the the launch mount or if it's off to the side here, but I feel like if it's off to the side, it'd be off the platform. So anyway, Pekka will probably get angry at me one way or another. Um, this is the look of the terrain at scale and I'll probably add some stuff to it like towns and uh, add some more definition to it uh, so that it looks a little bit bumpier instead of too flat. Right now it's not too bad, but yeah. Uh, that probably won't take too much more space than it does already. Just making sure that the roll is right. Um, I had the roll different, which suggests that we had a different orientation before. Uh, so don't go by more, my orientation. I leave you guys to orient it properly. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not a picky person, and yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. So we're using the launch script because I plan to do more with this using the launch script. And the launch script is going to take some time because first we have uh, Pekka's animation for the filling of the tanks here. It's expedited and it obviously doesn't take real time, but it still takes some time and we've left two minutes for it. And uh, it will also drain, apparently drain the tanks 
if you activate the same animation again, yeah, we have to wait until that's finished before trying to activate it again to uh, defill it and defrost it. Pekka has also added a sort of water daily system, but the animation we have to work on. Uh, it's tough to figure out. Basically, we're using the plume effects, and those plume effects don't exactly match a water daily use system much. So trying to figure out what kind of effects to use for a water daily use system is the question. The general implementation is there. I hope the action, for, action group for the chopsticks actually happens, but let me be careful about that. We seem to be filled up. Okay, well, I'm gonna retract the chopsticks now. Oh, I have to turn off SAS. Well, that's the daily use system right now. Well, we lost one engine. I think maybe I can refine the launch script so that it doesn't wiggle out like that. We've been doing that more and more. I've got SAS on for now, but I just need to add a new line to the launch script to fix that. Thanks to JM Studios for that line. It's just uh, adjusting the steering manager role thing. For now, we will let SAS and KOS fight it out. So off we go, and now it's activated the draining of the tanks as we go along, so it gets defrosted. So, the terrain. I've been focusing on the rocket when I'm supposed to be promoting the terrain, huh? I'll have, I still have to work on the counter. It's tough to get the balance of the colors right because one patch, the photo scenery was apparently taken at a different time when it's greener. Uh, trying to blend that in together is a little bit complicated. So there, there are some hard lines there that I have to work on. Well, that hard line is actually because of the edge of the mesh. The whole thing is cut up into a number of pieces to make things a little bit easier. That makes it easier to place the scenery textures because they come in chunks. So, and it's easier to let the game load it in chunks instead of trying to stitch it all together and make a huge texture out of it. So the terrain will be already placed, you don't have to place the terrain with Kerbal Constructs and it will already have the buildings on it. Uh, hopefully that will make things easier for people. Uh, let me take SAS off. It's still wiggling though. Oh, there's the hot staging. We've got hot staging, there you go. Hopefully that meets with everybody's approval. That's part of the reason I wanted the KOS script to do it, because I'll always forget the hot staging. So we are carrying payload, we're actually carrying an Avgas tank, but it's also carrying Star Stage 1, which is a Kerosene HTP third stage for the system. And that's meant to boost payloads out to uh, the outer planets, basically. It's for NASA, so that NASA can launch uh, little probes, well not really little, I think about 5 ton probes out to the outer planets direct. So it's a pretty heavy payload for Starship right now. Well, in space the terrain will not be visible. Once we get to space it, uh, it all blends in. Okay, we are now just on the vacuum engines. The sea level ones I've turned off. We're basically hanging out at Apoapsis. And we have throttled down. There's Florida. I don't know if we're saving enough for its recovery though. Okay, we have made orbit, but as far as the remaining Delta V goes, well, let's try and get the payload out and see. Of course, it's residuals, which are a whole other thing. So there's Star Stage 1 with its kerosene HTP, meant to be cheap. That was the goal of the kerosene HTP. Cheap and storable. Well, 
HTTP can decompose, but mostly storable. But um, there is a complication of getting out of the bay as usual. Uh, it sort of gets tilted there and then starts tilting. Sort of seems to get caught at that point. Don't worry, we can do the time warp trick. Um, oh, out it goes. All right, now how much delta V do we have? 426, so not quite. So we'll have to work on that. I, I, I think we might just need to make Star Stage 1 a little bit lighter. This here is 130 tons, so definitely over the mass that Starship is supposed to be able to carry anyway. 130 tons, I mean, being recoverable. Uh, 130 tons is definitely pushing it. So, yeah, I mean, maybe I'll just lighten up on this. Uh, right now it says that it's 8,000 meters per second, but actually it's, it seems to be not rooted properly because it's not including the tons in the payload. So it's probably about 6,000 meters per second or something like that. Anyway, so that was a test of the terrain. The terrain looks fine uh, and now has improvements in that the scenery is attached to it. And again, it automatically is loaded up. It is placed properly uh, without any use of Kerbal Constructs to try and place the terrain. And hopefully people can make use of it. So, and with that, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.